Let us take some time to study the Word of God with a sermon titled The First Coming Jesus and The Second Coming An Sang Hong. God came to this earth in the flesh to teach mankind the way to the kingdom of heaven, the way to receive the forgiveness of sins, and the way to salvation. If we go back 2,000 years to His first coming, there were many established religious groups at the time who claimed to believe in God. There was a popular religious group which greatly revered the Law of Moses and God Jehovah under the name of Judaism. In that situation, God came to this earth in the flesh. As we can see in John chapter 1, verse 14, it is written, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. God, who is the Word, came to this earth in the flesh. He came as a man to the body of Mary. He had the same human form as us. Since He came to this earth with the same appearance as us, with eyes, nose, mouth and ears, many people could not see Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, or God in the flesh. As a result, they sometimes treated Jesus disrespectfully, sometimes tried to stone Him, and failed to properly understand the grace of His coming to this earth to give us salvation. We can find through many records the historical situation of that time when they rejected Jesus, the Messiah, and did not believe in Him. However, among them were the early church saints who correctly received Jesus as the Messiah and Savior. To these people, God promised to grant the crown of life that would never disappear in the kingdom of heaven. It is the same in this age. There is a reason why God came to this earth in the flesh at both His first and second coming. We must clearly understand this reason in order to correctly receive the Messiah who came to this earth in the flesh, right? If we do not, history will repeat itself in this age of His second coming, just like at the time of His first coming, 2,000 years ago. Since they evaluated and judged God based on the knowledge of the privileged class, the first thought they had was, how can God become a man? This is why they picked up stones to stone Him and labeled Him as a Nazarene sect. Let us think about this for a moment. Will those who crucified Jesus be saved? Absolutely not. Why can't they be saved? There's only one reason. They did not recognize God properly. They treated God, who was trying to show them kindness, with malice. God came to this earth to give sinners who had already sinned in heaven and had been cast down to this earth another chance to receive the forgiveness of sins. However, they rejected and refused Him again on this earth, so their chance was taken away. It is the same in this last age of the Holy Spirit. God came to this earth in the flesh to restore the truths of the early church, the Sabbath of the New Covenant, the Passover of the New Covenant, the seven festivals in three times, and all the regulations of the New Covenant, just as He established 2,000 years ago. However, people do not recognize Him. Since they do not recognize Him, how do they treat Him? It is the same as it was 2,000 years ago. They treated Him terribly. They say things like, this is heresy. How can a mere man claim to be God? Can those who say such things really receive the kingdom of heaven? 
Please think about the words written in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It is written, just as people are destined to die once. And what does it happen after that? It is written, and after that, to face judgment. It says that after a person's death, everything is not over, but there will be God's judgment to determine whether the person goes to heaven or hell. Human beings can never avoid this situation. They all want God to pronounce the verdict. You may enter heaven at the judgment seat. But what does the Bible say? It says that He will judge everyone according to their deeds. If those who crucified Jesus 2,000 years ago went into the eternal punishment of hell, then all those who do not receive Christ who came to this earth a second time in this age, but hinder and insult Him, will also have to go into the eternal punishment. That is why you and I teach and preach about Christ An Sang Hong, who came in the name of Jesus at the first coming and came to this earth in the new name of Jesus at the second coming, isn't it? Let's turn to the teaching of John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God, who created the entire universe and everything in it, isn't He? That God is prophesied to come to this earth in the same human form as us. Chapter 1, verse 14. The Word. The Word was God. Isn't this recorded in chapter 1, verse 1? What did the Word, who is God, become? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the One and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is the One and only Son? It is Jesus, right? Thus we can say that God Jehovah took on the flesh and came to this earth in the name of Jesus to teach and preach the way of salvation to mankind. Can't we? The Bible enlightens us in John chapter 1 verse 1 verse 14 that God made His dwelling among us and we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, that is, Jesus. However, the Jews and the religious leaders of that time viewed Jesus differently. Let us take a look at John chapter 10 to see how they viewed Jesus. Let us read John 10 verse 30 to see how they treated God who came to this earth in the flesh to give them the opportunity for the forgiveness of sins and teach them the way to salvation. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied. But for what are they stoning him for? Blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Their answer as to why they picked up stones to stone Jesus was this. How can you, a mere man, claim to be God? However, what does John chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 14 say, the Word who is God became? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Let us also look at the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9. Let us take a look at the words of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and 
forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Who is being described here in this prophecy as a child, as a son? He refers to Jesus. Hence, when Jesus Christ comes to this earth in the flesh, what would he be called? He would be called Wonderful Counselor. And what else? Although he came to this earth in the form of a child, as a son, the Bible let us know that his true nature and his true essence is Mighty God and Everlasting Father. However, since he came to this earth in the flesh, just like an ordinary family, through a mother named Mary, a father named Joseph, and many siblings, did people believe that he is God? From a human perspective, it would have been impossible to recognize him as God. That is why, when Jesus came to this earth, what did he say? He said, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. We must be able to recognize God correctly. Since they didn't recognize him, Jesus Iscariot betrayed and sold Jesus. And the people said, Release Barabbas, the robber, but crucify Jesus. Those who truly recognize him would never have done such a thing. The same is true in this age. Let us open to Hebrews chapter 9. Let us take a look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear. How many times will he appear? A second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Jesus coming again to give us salvation is called the second coming. He said he would come a second time to this earth. Then, the circumstances of his first coming and his second coming must be different. This is because we all know that the way the Jewish people received the Messiah at the first coming was incorrect, isn't it? Then, what should we do at his second coming? We must not follow the same path they took. What must we do? When he comes, we must recognize him and receive him. And all of us must become those who follow his teachings of salvation, right? Unfortunately, among the 8 billion people on this earth, not many recognize him. Since there are not many, what is this path of truth called? It is called the narrow path or it can be expressed as the narrow door. Does the Bible say many people enter through it? No, not many enter through it. Isn't that what it says in Matthew chapter 7? I wish all mankind could be saved, but the Bible says that not all mankind are allowed to know this way. Since it is written, he will appear a second time to bring salvation. Only when he comes a second time, will the way of salvation be opened. And if he does not come, we humans will never be able to understand the way to salvation and will remain in darkness. Until he comes to this earth a second time, no human being will be able to discern what is truth and what is falsehood. During the Dark Ages in medieval times, the Sabbath was abolished in AD 321. In 8325, Passover was abolished. Furthermore, in 8354, Christmas, which is not in the Bible, was established as a tradition within the church as if it were a biblical teaching. Also, the cross was erected on top of the church. The truth of Christ disappeared one by one. Starting with the Sabbath, and then the Passover, while things that never existed before continued to appear. 
These types of churches we see now were formed as a result of the Dark Ages. Since churches are no longer filled with the teachings of Christ, but instead they are filled with pagan religious rituals and customs, this is the clear reason why Christ must come to this earth a second time. Then, in order to receive Him, we must know where He will come from, what truth He will bring, and what sign He will come, right? At His first coming, the people did not recognize Him. Every time He preached, they argued against His words, interfered with them, and formed opposition against them. In this way, the Jews, the Israelites, ended up accusing Jesus Christ, putting Him on trial, and bringing forth a miserable result of crucifying Him, who was without sin. Today, this gospel does not remain only within Jewish society. It is being preached all over the world, to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, let us confirm in the Bible the prophecy that He will come again to this earth a second time. Let us look at Micah chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. When it says, in the last days, it refers to the entire generation at the very end of the Gospel Age. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will. What will He do? Teach us His ways. In the last days, when He comes the second time, what will He do? He will teach us His ways. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from. Where will the law go out from? Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is what the Bible teaches us. Then, in the last days, where should we go to find Christ? who has come to this earth a second time. We must go to Zion, where He teaches the law and the way of life. Who is in Zion? Let us turn to Psalm chapter 132. Psalm chapter 132, verse 13. For the Lord has chosen... What has He chosen? Zion. He has desired it for His dwelling, saying, This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor I will satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation. And her faithful people will ever sing for joy. What did God say He would do when He comes to Zion? He said He would clothe her priests with salvation. What did He choose Zion to be? The Bible teaches us that God chose Zion to be His dwelling place, that is, the house of God. Then what kind of place does Zion spiritually refer to? Let us take a look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 33. Verse 20. In Isaiah chapter 33, verse 20, it is written, Look on Zion, the city of our festivals. Then Zion must be the very place where God's festivals are celebrated. Zion is the place where God's festivals are kept and the place where God's festivals exist. Some people may ask, God's festivals? What are the festivals of God? Let us find out what the festivals of God are. Let us turn to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. Speak to the Israelites and say to them, 
These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Verse 3, There are six days when you may work, but what is the seventh day? There are weekly festivals observed every week and annual festivals observed once a year. Among the weekly festivals, there is a festival called the Sabbath. Let us look at verse 3 again. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Whether you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. Verse 4. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's festival of unleavened bread begins. The annual festivals are the Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, festival of weeks, trumpets, day of atonement, and tabernacles. Today there are countless churches around us, like the sand by the seashore, but what do most of them keep? They keep Sunday worship, they don't keep the Sabbath day. Not keeping the Sabbath day means not keeping God's festivals. A place that does not keep God's festivals can never be considered Zion. Then, would God dwell in a place that is not Zion? It can never be God's dwelling place in the last days. God said that He would make Zion His resting place forever and ever. Then, by looking at the Sabbath alone, everyone, can you distinguish between a church where God dwells and a church where God does not dwell? Yes, you can. All the laws of truth were destroyed and abolished. However, God came to this earth a second time, restored all the regulations of truth, and taught us everything in this age. Isn't this why you and I can understand the Sabbath day, the Passover, the seven festivals of three times, and all the truth of the new covenant? Whom can we meet in such a city of festivals? We can meet God, who dwells in Zion. Where can we find God in the last days? We can find Him in Zion. The Bible tells us that He proclaims the law of life of the new covenant and teaches mankind there. Then why do other churches in the world today not have the Sabbath and the Passover? Why are they unable to keep God's festivals? Daniel chapter 7 gives us the answer. Let us read Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 together. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 it is written, He will speak against the Most High. In the Bible, the Most High refers to God. Only God can be called the Most High in the entire universe. Then, who is the one in a position to speak against God? It is the devil. The Bible teaches us that he will speak against the Most High, and what will he do? Oppress his holy people and try to change. What will he try to change? The set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. As Daniel chapter 7 prophesied, God's set times and the laws of the truth began to be changed and altered around the 4th century, and this process accelerated rapidly. Of course, there had been small signs of lawlessness even before that. However, this began in earnest in AD 321, when the Roman Empire, which worshipped the sun god, abolished the Sabbath day 
and instituted Sunday law. Also in 8325, in a place called Nicaea, the Passover was abolished. Then, in 8354, Christmas began to be introduced, and after that, the cross was introduced into the church and began to be erected. All these pagan practices entered the church one by one, and these practices formed the church as it is today. These churches are not the church that Jesus established. Even among the Ten Commandments, God commanded us to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Fourth Commandment. But the Catholic Church replaced it with remember to keep holy the Lord's day. This was fulfilled exactly according to God's word of prophecy. As it is written, the source of all this change and distortion of God's set times and laws originated from the one who opposes God. God himself came to this earth to teach mankind his festivals. On the other hand, Satan spread false knowledge and information to mankind in order to make it seem as if God's festivals were nothing and to misrepresent all of God's teachings, as we can see through the prophecy of Daniel. Christ An Sang Hong came to this earth a second time to teach mankind all the true laws of life that have been corrupted, distorted, and broken. He taught us the true Passover of life, the Sabbath of life, the festivals of life, and the new covenant of life. He bestowed upon us all these things and went up to heaven. Hasn't all this happened according to the prophecy? With the correct understanding, we must become those who receive Christ. The Jews rejected Jesus at his first coming, saying, How can a mere man claim to be God? Even in this age, people slander us, saying, How can a mere man claim to be God? And why do you believe in a man? Jesus also came to this earth as a man. A religion that does not receive Christ, God who comes to this earth as a man, is definitely not Christianity. Let us confirm how the Bible and the prophets have explained about this matter by turning to 2 John. 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and what is such a person? The Antichrist. Such people are those who oppose Christ and speak against Him. To put it simply, they're enemies of Christ and they belong to Satan the devil. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh are the Antichrist. The Bible clearly states this matter, and the apostles and prophets clearly explain this issue in this way. However, today, as it was 2,000 years ago at the first coming, they have an issue with the very fact that God came to this earth in the flesh. Do you think God does not have that kind of power? Even we, the souls who committed sin in the kingdom of heaven, can put on flesh. But God cannot put on the tent of flesh that He created? Does that make sense? God who is almighty and omnipotent can put on flesh, or He can be in the Spirit. God has power to do whatever He desires. What does the Bible tell us about the ones who say God must never come in the flesh? Such people are the deceiver and the Antichrist, that is, the false Christ and those who oppose God. Today, we can see that there are so many similarities between the situation of the first coming Jesus and the second coming An Sang Hong. In order for us to receive Christ in this age, we must dwell in Zion, where the festivals are kept. 
What did God say He would do with His law in the last days in Zion? He would appear a second time on this earth to teach His law to all mankind in order to lead them to the way of salvation. Believing in the prophecies of the Bible and the prophets, let us be those who can absolutely believe the Word of God and receive Christ. No matter what slander and hindrance the world may throw at us, even 2,000 years ago, they greatly insulted Jesus, calling Him the Nazarene sect. Even Apostle Paul, one of the great apostles of the early church, was called a ringleader of the Nazarene sect, as recorded in Acts chapter 24. Why was that? It was because he believed in God, who came to this earth as a man. Their wrong claim, how can God come as a man, led them to have the wrong idea, and that idea led them to eternal hell. The way of truth, the way of righteousness, is always in the Bible. Let us look to the Bible and follow the teachings of God's Word correctly to the end, so that you and I may become the ones who can hold fast to this faith until the end, just like the saints of the early church. Do not lose the crown of life and receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of heaven. Thank you very much.